The film begins in a modern Japanese society. The public authority has carried out a complex cross-country rule named the Red Threads of Science. As indicated by this standard, when an individual turns 16, they are assigned a romantic partner by the public authority. The partners are picked after broad examination about the two parties, similar to their leisure activities propensities, families, etc. The primary point of the law is to support fruitful relationships and battle progressively low rates of birth, which are undermining an absence of labor in Japan. Throughout the long term, the framework has demonstrated to be productive, as practically 100% of government-organized relationships are fruitful in creating posterity and are more averse to get divorced. The only drawback of the law is that individuals in some cases experience passionate feelings before they turn 16 and don't believe the public authority should disrupt their love life. In such cases, the people who resist the plan face punishments and get less honor as citizens. The hero of the film is a bright secondary school young lady named Aoi. She is going to turn 16 in a day and is really amped up for at long last getting to meet her first love. Every one of her companions are likewise excited for her as they have been anxiously holding back to turn 16 as far back as they can recall. Today, at 12 p.m., Aoi will get a government notification containing all essential data about her chosen one. She can hardly hang tight for the notification and is on her feet the whole day. While getting back, Aoi meets her young life dearest companion, Yuto. The young ladies in the school grovel over him since he is quite possibly of the most attractive understudy. Be that as it may, Yuto checks out them since he is enamored with Aoi. He has habitually attempted to admit his feeling, yet has consistently eased off in light of the fact that he is excessively shy. He is cheerful being her closest companion, yet now that she is going to track down somebody to love, Yuto is concerned that their friendship will go to pieces. As they talk about various things, Yuto teasingly makes reference to that she was his most memorable kiss. The scene goes into a flashback when the two were still in primary school. At a yearly program, Yuto got the job of the prince. Notwithstanding, Aoi was relegated a wildflower. She needed to be the princess so seriously that at the peak of the show, she pulled Yuto and kissed him. They actually chuckle about the episode right up to the present day. In the accompanying scene, Aoi, her parents and her uncle are having a birthday supper at her home. Indeed, even Aoi's parents are amped up for the notification, which is planned for a couple of hours. Aoi's parents likewise met through the government program, yet her uncle is as yet unmarried. It has forever been a theme that nobody likes to discuss, so Aoi doesn't dive into it. Afterward, she is given a dress that she wears to, bed. Over the long haul, she gets more nervous, but then Yudo calls her. They meet outside and he gives her a present for her birthday. A penguin showpiece that works out positively for her room. Yudo knows it all there is to Aoi, similar to how she touches her hair when she lies. He effectively figures out that she is apprehensive when she touches her hair and cases that she isn't. To quiet her down, they choose to reenact how she will acquaint herself with her particularly chosen one. Aoi begins discussing herself, which causes Yuto to feel a scope of feelings, particularly in light of the fact that she is seeing him like she would check her sweetheart out. He removes her and admits his love, shocking Aoi. He likewise attempts to kiss her, however she withdraws in shock. Yuto is stunned and can simply apologize. Before they can talk further, they are interfered with by Aoi's match named Sakuk. He presents himself and gives her a bundle of roses. The man is superior to what she had envisioned and is dashingly attractive, hypnotized by his presence. Aoi. Overlooks Yuto. He compliments them and lets just in the wake of giving the other two some be an ideal opportunity to talk. Aoi turns towards her ideal man in fervor, yet he names an overall setting prior to pivoting and leaving suddenly. The unfortunate young lady questions on the off chance that she is dreaming prior to getting back. They meet at the said place the following day, which ends up being an extravagant cafe. We figure out that Sawcook's dad is the executive of a major clinic, and Sawcook should acquire the riches and position sometime in the not-so-distant future. He is likewise hoping to go to a med school. He is brilliant and aggressive, yet not so enormous on discussion. Aoi keeps conversing with Cut the Awkwardness, however some time later, Sawcook stops her. He pulls her outside, making her blush in light of their joined hands. Sawcook then, at that point, asks her who Yuto is, yet cuts her off before she even responses. He doesn't mind at all what sort of young lady Aoi is and considers their relationship a societal formality. Thus, regardless of whether she has more guys she is keen on, it doesn't annoy Sawkook. Aoi has a go at making sense of that she is not at all like that, but Sawkook cuts her off again. The following day at school, her companions are envious of her for handling a rich and hot boyfriend. Aoi concurs, yet where it counts she doesn't have the foggiest idea how to feel about Sawkook. In the next week, 
they go on a few dates, all of which Aoi despises. So Koke strolls excessively quick for her, doesn't talk a lot and never grins. At a certain point, Aoi feels like somebody is compromising him to date her. Having had enough, one day she takes on the appearance of an evidently rich woman who matches his status. The spruce up is over the top, but Sawkook doesn't remark about it. Aoi again has a go at making discussions, however he excuses her with straightforward responses. She even asks assuming he has enlightened his friends concerning her, yet Sawkook thinks the inquiry is ridiculous in light of the fact that he could never follow through with something like that. Aoi leaves the cafe after one more bomb date, losing trust that she will at any point coexist with him. Then, at that point, she meets Yudo, who encourages her to meet his parents and figure out more about him so the discussions can be more significant. Aoi concurs and goes to his home the exceptionally following day. Sawkook's mom, is benevolent, however his dad is on the stricter side. He requests that Aoi maintain good manners now that she's going to be a part of their family. Sawkook hears him and consumes in rage. He has never preferred his dad in light of the fact that the elderly person thinks he claims his child. Seeing him do likewise to Aoi, Sawkook can never again control his displeasure. He represents his girlfriend, requesting that his dad avoid her. From that point forward, they stroll to the bus station together, discussing numerous things. Sawkook apologizes for not being adequate for her. Aoi thusly, claims that she scarcely has a lot of familiarity with him. Yet, since he defended her before his dad, she is guaranteed that he is a decent individual. Or on the other hand perhaps he simply detests his dickhead father. Aoi's transport shows up, however Sawkook doesn't let her board it by pulling her around and kissing her. The transport drives away. As the two keep kissing, Aoi is elated. The following day. She thanks Yuto for the advice, despite the fact that it didn't resolve the manner in which he figured it would. They abstain from discussing his admission and take part in other cheerful discussions. Yuta's birthday is in a couple of days and he will likewise get to meet his assigned partner. Nevertheless, not at all like Aoi, he isn't excessively excited. At the point when Sawkook and Aoi are on their next date, she carries him to a shop, purchase a scarf for Yuto as a birthday present. After that they go to an aquarium, however Sawkook isn't feeling great. Sawkook feels that something is off-putting. Aoi registers that he is desirous and embraces him since him being envious implies that he prefers her. Sawkook grins at her interestingly and the two had a kiss. In the accompanying scene, Aoi gives Yuto the scarf. He uncovers that he conversed with his picked partner, but she lives in one more piece of the country, so they have chosen to meet in the late spring. Since Yuto has no plans for his birthday, Aoi thinks it is smart in the event that she carries him alongside her and Sawkook. At first, the date is extremely off-kilter, however the parents begin talking when Yuto finds that Sawkook picked his scarf. Before an hour's over, they get along beautiful well, however at that point the two are lippy without Aoi. Yuto inquires as to whether he understands what things Aoi different preferences, her characteristics, her desires in life, or anything that an accomplice ought to be aware. Sawkook is at legitimate fault for never giving a lot of consideration to his girlfriend, so he doesn't have anything to say. Yuto, then again, records the things that Aoi enjoys and makes sense of how Sawkook can be a superior partner for her. They in the end get into a fight and Yuto leaves. For the following couple of days he doesn't come to school. Then one night Aoi figures out Sawkook is moving to Tokyo to a better university. He will spend the following six years there, so the two should be in a distant relationship to abstain from living separated. He recommends that they move in together. In any case, this may be conceivable assuming that they get married. It is a pattern for 16 years olds to get married and begin a family. Subsequently, Aoi thinks about it. To clear her head, she goes to her uncle's. The following day. He discusses his picked partner who moved to another country when they were still attached. She stayed away forever and is joyfully married to somebody in London. As indicated by him, living with the punishments is simple on the off chance that you are with the individual you really love. Although frightened, Aoi feels prepared to begin the new part of her life. In the accompanying scene, Sawkook and Aoi are in Tokyo going to an open grounds occasion. Aoi is exhausted in the talk. However seeing Sawkook appreciate it makes it worth the effort for her. After the talk, they visit a few spots, eat new food and have a great deal of fun. In the end, Sawkook carries her to a congregation and gives her a little feline compartment box that she had for practically forever cared about. It gives her pleasure, which is then duplicated. At the point when she finds a wedding band inside, Aoi says okay and the two beginning getting ready for the wedding. She likewise illuminates every one of her friends about the proposition yet a piece of her actually feels void due to Yuto. Not attendance somewhere else. Yuto helps the wedding greeting through the mail, 
however doesn't respond to it. It is the week, paving the way to the wedding and Aoi has a ton of work to do, yet the thought of her closest friend never leaves her mind as she misses Yudo horrendously. Besides, she and Sakuk have their most memorable fight when he will not let her discussion too. His parents and keep a decent connection with them. Aoi gets that he could do without his father, but she needs to frame an association with his parents all alone too. Sakuk will not tune in and closes her down at whatever point they have a discussion about his parents. The costly supper dates before long turn exhausting as they sort out that they don't share numerous things practically speaking. At some point, Aoi goes to Sakuk father's hospital and converses with him about the wedding. The gathering goes apparently well as he has at long last begun to regard limits. While leaving the premises, Aoi sees Sakuk strolling towards his dad's office and follows him. She hears him, asking his dad to compose a proposal letter for a friend. Out of luck. It is before long uncovered that the said friend is Yudo and he has a subsequent stage mind growth. His treatment must be finished in a costly hospital in Tokyo, however after the proposal letter, he will at last be able to save his life. In the following scene, Sakuk hands Yudo the papers and requests him to not lose trust since the possibilities from his endurance are still high. In the meantime, Aoi sits alone in a recreation area, still unfit to understand what she heard at the hospital. Since Yudo doesn't maintain that she should be aware of the sickness, she chooses to profess to be uninformed. It additionally causes her to understand that she cherishes Yudo considerably more than she lets on. Then at last comes the day of the wedding. The visitors show up at the venue where every one of the arrangements are finished, yet the lady and the man of the hour are late. Outside, Soku K meets Aoi and praises her magnificence. He asks her what is making her miserable, despite the fact that he has a very smart thought of what it is. At the point when she doesn't answer, he asks assuming she is enamored with Yudo. Aoi rushed to deny it, however at that point she touches her hair. By now Sakuk understands what that means, he tells Aoi that her happiness is the only thing that matters, and if she feels she's about to get into a loveless marriage, she should run away as soon possible, right now. Sakuk made a promise, to handle the guest and the parents, before encouraging her to hurry up, Filled with tears Aoi that him and runs towards the airport, where Yudo is about to fly to Tokyo for brain surgery, they meet at the terminal and Aoi expresses her love. As Yudo did on the day of her birthday, initially Yudo freaks out asking her to return to the church, but in the end his dream comes true, and they shared a kiss. The End